السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أهل الوفا أما بعد الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم اللهم ألهمني رشدي وأعذني من شر نفسي الحمد لله الذي جمعنا في هذا المسجد المبارك في هذا الشهر المبارك في هذا الوقت المبارك أكو حقيقة لما أنبيوا كتكوا يكوموا أنبيوا نكبوا كلكوا حذيانو لكن في لوسا شامي أمسما كم بنتشجيع كوجليس كوجليس سيسويت ويجانا na inshallah kwa nadhara na dua za wazazi pamoja na walimu na mashaikh na dua zenu Mwezi Mungu atatuwafikia kusema ile ambayo itakuwa ina faida kwangu mimi na kwetu na kwenu nyinyi inshallah na nimechagua kuzungumza kwa lugha ya Kiingereza itakuwa ni rahisi kwangu na nitaomba radhi zenu kama kama mlikuwa mnatarajia tazungumza kwa lugha ya taifa lakini uh, itakuwa more comfortable nikizungumza kwa kwa Kiingereza kwa hakika kukusanyika kwenye msikiti kwa wakati huu baina al maghrib wa laisha ni katika ni katika neema ya Mwenyezi Mungu na ulama wanasema kwamba ila aya katika suratu sajda ambayo inasema baada a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim tatajafa junubuhum anil madaji yad'una rabbahum khawfan wa tama wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun inaingia pia katika wakati huu baina ya maghrib wa isha ambayo watu wengi inakuwa wana shughuli zao labda wengine wanaenda nyumbani kutayarisha chakula wengine wamechoka kwa kazi na leo Jumapili ni neema ya Mwenyezi Mungu ambaye ameweza kutukusanya hapo falillahi alhamdu ala dhalik wa, wa sisi tuko kwenye mwezi wa Muharram na mwezi huu ni katika ashurul hurum na katika mwezi huu kheri yote ukifanya ina ajri yake zaidi na shar vile vile ina ina ikhab yake zaidi so tuwashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu ametukusanya kwenye mwezi huu kwa kitu kwa jambo la kheri kwa jambo ya kujifundisha na kujitayarisha na na kiyama na alama zake وعن انس رضي الله عنه قال ان اعرابيا قال لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متى الساعه قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما اعددت لها قال حب الله ورسوله قال انت مع من احببت متفق عليه سو حضرت انس رضي الله عنه نريتس ذا مان كام تو ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم ان هي اسكت When is the hour? The Prophet Sallallahu asked the man, what have you prepared for it? Khal, he said, I have not prepared for it much except for the love of Allah and his messenger. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the man will be with the one whom he loves. And the Sahabi narrates that this was one of the most joyous moments in their lives because the, the, the Sahaba did not know about other things but one thing they were definitely sure of was hubbul rasul hubbullahi wa rasulihi so this gave them a certain delight which which filled their hearts and they rejoiced at, at the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but for us at this point in time we also realize that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when asked about this, the hour he tried to direct the attention of the person from the hour itself to what the person has prepared for the hour so that already tells us that our mindset should be on our preparation for this incoming 
event which is the most, the, the, one of the major event, events in a, in a human being's lifetime. And so uh, we have a lot to talk about, but uh, inshallah we will uh, divide our, uh, our uh, discussion or our talk on um, first discussing about the fitna and what we understand by fitna and then we shall continue and uh, discuss about uh, the advices given to overcome the fitna and also general advices which can apply at any point in time especially at our, in our times and then we shall then finish off with uh, with uh, with uh, with some statements of hope which we always uh, which we always uh, search for because every time we go to a lecture we are we are we are given the warning but we are not given any hope so we we sometimes lose hope and we have we have grief in our hearts but inshallah we, we shall find that within the quran and the sunnah there's a lot of moments there's a lot of places where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have given us hope in the future so if we talk about fitna fitna the word fatana yaftunu it's derived from something it has many meanings but one of it is something something which seduces which which brings you closer it yani kiswahili you can say ina kutoa timing kwa sababu ina ku ina kuvutia hivyo fitna also means uh, that it also uh, the purification of the gold is called fatana yani you when you purify gold you said you, you have done you have done you have done yaftunu uh, dhahab and you have purified the gold and from this we understand that fitna is actually for the purification of the believer because when a when a believer goes through a trial or a tribulation it actually purifies him and it uh, it becomes a reason for his sins to be forgiven or for her sins to be forgiven and for her station to be elevated in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when we talk of fitna is a goldsmith he, a goldsmith would tell you that when you put the gold in the in the acid and put it to the flame, and as the as the as the as the heat starts reacting, you see the copper fumes of copper nitrate or the fumes of copper nitrate evaporating, which are choking, and you see the silver taking a liquid form as silver nitrate, and what remains is a solid gold, and this is the nature of fitna. What happens is that. During the end times, when the fitna intensifies, only the believers who are the gold are the ones which, who remain. The rest are, 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 are purified from the filth. So what happens is that we can, we can, we can strike a similitude. And uh, I've not heard this before, but it, it applies. That the fumes can be, can be the of kuffar, the choking fumes of copper nitrate are the kuffar which evaporate when the, when the fitna comes. And the munafiqeen are the liquid which become silver nitrates, which don't have a form of their own. مُذَبْذَبِينَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ لَا إِلَهَا أُولَى وَلَا إِلَهَا أُولَى They don't have a form of their own. They, they're just in between. So it's the in-between state. But what remains as gold, as pure, is the liquid, is a solid form, and which is the example of a believer. So when a, when a, when a, when a calamity afflicts you, you must understand that this is in term, in, indeed a purification process for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna." That we can be tried in both ways. Something which is good for you, for example, your afia or your wealth can be a fitna for you. Or something which is, which, is, which is inherently or which we feel is bad for us, for example, sickness or poverty can also be a test for you. So the test can, it can come in many forms. It can come in religious matters. It can come in worldly matters. But uh, what we should understand is that the test is meant to purify us. It is meant to make us better believers. It is meant, us, meant for us to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in an even stronger sense. And from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa if we look, for example, before the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa there was a big event. And the event itself was the Isra and the Miraj. And the Isra and the Miraj was a fitna for the believers because for them to believe that something like momentous like this that somebody could travel from Makkah to Jerusalem Baytul, Bay, uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa and onward to the heavens in one night it was something which was improbable so for them it was a fitna and there are some people or some people at that time they lost their faith because of that and there are some people 
like Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu he said that if the Prophet sallallahu said it in Qala, faqad sadaq. And he was, he was given the title of Siddiq. He became even higher. His level of belief even became higher. And there are some, the kuffar, who just continue to waver in misguidance. So when the fitna comes, it sometimes comes just before a big calamity in order to prepare the believer for this, for this oncoming event. And the event after the, after the Isra and the Miraj was the Hijrah. And the Hijrah was a big test for the believers because they had to live everything they had in Makkah and travel to Medina for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should understand that, uh, that the nature of fitna is, uh, is, uh, is, is like that. It can have many sides to it. But interestingly, we must understand that Azad Ibn Uwayna who says, narrates in, in, it's narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari that, uh, that when the when the time of war used to come, they used to remind themselves, the, the Sahaba used to remind themselves of this poetry of a Jahili poet, which was, uh, his name was Amrul Khais. He was a Jahili poet. And the Sahaba, when the war came, they used to remind themselves of this po po poem. And the poem went, it goes like this. Al-harbu awwal ma takunu fityatun. The war, when it first comes, it's, it's like a young woman which is, who is attractive. It attracts every young ignoramus. It seducts, it, it, it seducts every young man into its captivating beauty. Until when, it, it, when the war gets, when the war gets intense, and people get engulfed in the flames of war and it gets dirty and, and, and you see the catastrophes of war. Then what happens to this, to this uh, fitya? It says, Wallat ajuzan ghayra dhati halili. Dhati halili. It turns out that the same att attractive fitna or the war, it turns out to be an old woman who does not have a husband. Yunkaru launuha wa taghayyarat wa taghayyarat makruhatan lis what happens is that this same woman or this same war which was so attractive after, after it has ended it becomes like an old woman who nobody wants to come close to it becomes a foul smelling woman who nobody wants to hug or even kiss from that, from that fitya it turns out to be this, this old woman so that is the nature of the fitna what happens is that in the beginning people are attracted to it but if we, if, we, if, we, if we look deeply, it is, it is something which is to be avoided. As Hassan al-Basri, uh, rahmatullah alayhi, says, Al-fitnatu idha akbalat a'rafaha kullu alimin, wa idha adbarat a'rafaha kullu jahilin. When the fitna first comes, the knowledgeable people, they realize it and they stay away from it. But the ignorant, they get, they get seduced with it and they fall into the trap of the fitna. So one of the advices which which we must understand during this time, is that we should not be attracted to every, every fitna. You should try and... Kun ka khair ibn Adam. The Prophet ﷺ said, be like the better of the two sons of Adam. And the better of the two sons, kun madluman wala dhaliman. You be oppressed, but do not oppress. Because if you're oppressed, you have, you, at least you'll be saved in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do not be the one who oppresses. So when the fitna comes, we must understand that we, have, we are supposed to, we are supposed to stay, stay away from the fitna. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he, he, he had many sahaba who had many different types of knowledge. But there are some sahaba whom he's, who specialize in certain types of knowledge. And as Huzaifa al-Yamani, who was one of them, Khassahu Nabi ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ chose him for this knowledge of the psalm. And he narrates many things with regards to the end of times. And inshallah, as we come across, uh, as we continue with our talk, we shall, we shall come across the, the sayings of Hazrat Uzaif uh, al-Yamani. What we, we must understand that despite the end of times, despite its difficulty, a Muslim, a Mumin remains protected. If he, if he remains connected, to his salah, to his dhikr. 
and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he remains connected despite the fitna. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in many narrations about reciting of Surah Al-Kahf, and he said that if, if, in one of the narrations, if you meet the Jal, we are supposed to avoid meeting him. But if you, if you see him face to face, then you recite the first three verses of Surah Al-Kahf and you spit at him. And something which is as foul as spitting at a human being, which we are even, we, in Islam we are not even allowed to spit an, at an animal. But because, because of the vile nature of this, of this being, the Jal who claims lordship, we are, we, are, we are told to even spit at him. But again, we understand that the Prophet ﷺ did not leave us bereft of guidance. And the, and the recitation of the Surah Al-Kaf, first 10 or the last 10, or, or the whole Surah, in many different narrations it has come, at least you should, you should try and stick to it on every Friday. Because this, this recitation of the Surah Al-Kaf was there since the prophetic narrative started. Since the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Every Friday, the Muslims used to recite Surah Al-Kaf. And it was not that they were any closer to the Akhirah than us. But because the fitna of the Dajjal, it builds up. It builds up. And if you continue reciting Surah Al-Kaf, you continue re remaining in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hirs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must not take something like that lightly. And we must ensure that when we leave from here, that... On every Friday, and even some scholars, I've, we have heard Habib Omar bin Hafid recommend that you recite it as much as you can, even every day if possible. So recitation of the Surah Al-Kaf, the whole of it, or the first 10 or the last 10 in the different rewires, should be something which we take away when we leave this, room, uh, this masjid today. And another thing that the Prophet wasallam also told us, that, that the fitna for a human being or for a, for a man will be in his family, in his wealth, in his neighbors, in his children. And he told us that you, you take protection in this with your salah, with your sadaqah, which, which includes zakah, with zikr of Allah, which is under salah, with amr bin ma'roof and nahi anil mulkar. These ones will protect you from the fitan, which will, which will afflict yourself and your families. We, we will just finish with a few statements of the sahaba with regards to the fitna. And once Hazrat, Prophet Sallallahu was advising Hazrat Abu, Hudayf, Abu Hudayfa, uh, Al-Yamani, he told him that, uh, that hold on to, to, to your faith like you would hold on to the bark of a tree with your mole at it. Don't, don't let go and don't involve yourself in fitna. Because if you involve yourself, you don't know where you will fall. Because at the end times, things become very blurry. That's why the Prophet ﷺ gave, the, gave us the dua, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa, warzukna attiba'a, wa anina al-baatila baatila, warzukna ajtinaba, wa la taj'alu alayna mutashabihan, fanattabi'i al-hawa. The Prophet ﷺ gave us this dua so that we can differentiate the truth from the falsehood. And also, Hazrat Abu Darda narrates that the Prophet ﷺ told him, aghlik alayka baytak wa ajlis fidaik. Close your doors and sit in your house. Do not involve yourself in fitna, whether in speech or whether in action or even with a thought in your heart. For example, you're sitting and watching TV and you see this group being attacking this group or this group taking over a town. You say, oh good, it happened like that. Don't even, don't even say that or don't even any feeling in your heart about that because the things are not clear. When things will get clear, the people, if you, if you stick with the, or if you can remain connected, to the people of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will know that now is the time for you to take action. But until then, you should just hold your reins, stay at home, and do not involve yourself in this fitan. Because the home of a believer in these trying times is, is, like, a, is like a fort. So now, uh, we, will, we, will, we will go ahead and uh, just speak about general advices which the Prophet ﷺ gave us during these times. In these times we see laghu has increased, we see profanity has increased. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا وَعَارِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ so, so from these principles, we, al we already understand that when you come across such gatherings of profanity or such places of profanity, you just move away with, with your nobility, with your honor. Do not involve yourself. Do not be pulled into it.
And if we come to understand the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which says, ظَهَرَ الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِ النَّاسِ That corruption has spread on earth and in the sea for what people have brought forward. So we understand that if we ourselves rectify ourselves, then, we can be, then our environment around us can, can be rectified. If we build or if we, if we get enough people to do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change our condition. And uh, we, are, we, know, we know the famous verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا يُغَيْرُ مَا بِخَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيْرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ So, in, in reality, the solution, the solution to all these problems is to start and refining ourselves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْخُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ So today we complain there is no barakah, there is no rain, there is drought, there is famine. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا He says that's the solution. You know, you have to, you have to deeply ingrain the faith in your, in your heart. And you have to be conscious of the choices you are making. And uh, Shaykh Abdullah bin Bayah says that, uh, that uh, you should connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he does not change. The world keeps on changing. It changes. And it changes all the time. If you're connected to the world, you'll always be in a dilemma. But if you connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll be at peace. And we can, we can strike an example of a wheel. When a wheel is rotating, the center point is always constant. And it is where, from where all the energies are coming. But, but at the periphery, at the, at the ends of, of this wheel, there's always motion. There's always something which is happening, something which is, which is, which is pushing you from, from, from going up to down and back to up. So we can, we, can, we can strike an example. And in our religion, the center point will be the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Will be to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala bi dhikrillahi, you get that itminan when you're at the center. So you must understand that, that if you want peace and tranquility, because right now we are living in jaza, we are living in uncertainty, we are living in anxiety, we are, we, we are looking for this itminan. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that, لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَ الذِّكْرَ وَهُوَ الشَّهِيدٌ You have to have a heart. When you do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to have presence of heart. Otherwise, it will just be, it will just be on, on the surface level. Because when, the, when these fitna come, you have to be strong from inside. You have to build your inside. So when you do dhikr, have, your, have the presence of your heart as, with your tongue and your intellect. There is tafakkur, there is tadabbur. That will build your insight. So when we, when, we, when we do something like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his, his strength. Another thing which we, we must understand in these this times is that humanity as a whole is in problem. Humanity, f families are disintegrating. Children are going wayward. There is drug addiction. There is pornography. There is all sorts of evils which is, dis which is, which is breaking the identity of a human being. So we are at a time when we have to have a bigger picture. When we realize that we have our, our, our fellow Christians or Jews or people from other nations who have, who have the will to work together for a common good. We must work with them. We must not exclude that possibility. But we have our own principles. But we must work for the common good within the definitions or within the framework of the Sharia. So we must have that bigger picture. So that is something we must keep in mind. And another thing which we have these days is that people, people have that fear. There is global warming, Maji Taisha, Siji, uh, there is only this much uh, level of water remaining in the, in the, in the earth's surface. These are things we should, which we should not be worried about. Because, Lillahi khazainu samawati wal ard. Allah has the treasures of the heaven and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the badiyu samawati wal ard. He is the fatiru samawati wal ard. He put the water there in the first place. So if you are believers, if you are in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is going to give barakah to that water, it will be sufficient for you. It will be sufficient for you. Your worry should be whether you are doing ta'af of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you are doing ma'asiyah. That is your worry as a believer. Your concern, your focal point should be whether you are in an obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you are moving away from his commands. If that is in order, then the rest is in order. And also another thing is that 
there are some things which are beyond our control. You can control the amount of water you use when you're brushing your teeth at home. You can control the water. You can't control other things, but at least you can control that. So you, you try and control that. That is, that is trying to stop Israf. It is within the, what, uh, what the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. He taught us not to waste water even from a running stream. If you're doing wudu from a river, you, you're not supposed to waste that water. So our taps which are, which are running with running water, when you're taking a shower, when you're washing clothes, we can, we can do that little because the little is what make, makes the big difference. In haba na haba, ujaza, kibaba. So that's what, what we say in Swahil. Another thing which we must understand that if you strive, man jadda wajad, if you strive, walladhina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sunnat Allah, walan tajida li sunnatillahi tabdila. You shall not find the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changing. So if you're going to strive, if you're going to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're going to seek the guidance, then you shall find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall guide you despite the times, despite the difficulty, and despite the circumstances you are in. Another thing which the scholars say is that our, our age has become an age of loneliness. Everybody in his room with his phone. We are suffering this, this loneliness. We are suffering this emptiness. And a human being... Look at this gathering, it's so beautiful. You're going to meet somebody you know, you're going to exchange a few words. It's so beautiful to have that, 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 uh, that, uh, that unity, that, that social element to the human being. And with, as, as the, as one of the signs which we are seeing is that, that people are becoming more and more lonely. There is, there is that, that not, not, the, not, the beautiful, not the beneficial khalwa, is this, is this, uh, is this, uh, deadening khalwa which, de which, which kills your spirituality so we must understand that is an, we, we must go and visit uh, our, our neighbors, our friends, our family even if it's for short time they, we must give the uh, life to the sunnah we must give the life to the sunnah of visiting the Prophet Sallallahu among the things which he warned the community he told Hazrat Ibn Mas'ud anhu, Ya Ibn Mas'ud inna min alamati sa'ati wa ashratiha an tuwasil al atbaq that the dishes, atbaq is a dish, tabaka is a dish, is a concave dish. That is actually the definition. And that is the one of the miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu that he predicted the dish. He says that the tawasul, tawasul is what we are talking about, the satellite dishes communicating. And the, and, the, and, the, and the ties will be broken, the kinship ties will be broken. So what happens, everybody is sitting at home watching TV and nobody is visiting each other. So this was what, what the Prophet ﷺ said. This is a sign of, of the this is a sign of the Qiyamah. So what should we do? Visit. Visit. And I'm telling myself first, because I have a dear friend who, who gave uh, a birth to uh, a baby girl and it's been three months and I have not visited. So inshallah I will start with this. And I, what I'm saying here, I'm trying to advise myself first and you all. So we must visit our neighbors. And this is one of the solutions. Another thing which we have is that the hearts have become hard. There is qaswatul qalb. The hearts have become hard. So what is the solution the Prophet Sallallahu has said? With the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, it removes the rust of the, of the heart. We should, we, should, uh, we should give life to the recitation of the Quran. The uh, Prophet Sallallahu says, Inna qawmi takadu hadhal Qur'ana mahjura. We have left the Qur'an. Only Ramadan we open. Look at the Qur'an. Just remove some Qur'ans here. You see they are filled with dust. I know we are next to Digger Road. But then still they are filled with dust. We, we, should, we should give life to the recitation of the Qur'an. It will give you that joy, that itminan ul qalb, which you will not find anywhere else. Like Hazrat uh, Abu, Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, إِنَّنَا فِي السَّعَادَةِ وَحَلَاوَةٍ لَوْ عَلِمَ بِهَا الْمُلُوكَ لَجَادَلُونَ عَلَيْهَا بِالسُّيُوفِ We are in joy and felicity. If the kings knew what we experience inside, they will fight us with swords. They will want to cut our, our, our hearts and get that joy out of us. So these, these are the joys of, of faith which a believer, despite the, the circumstances, experiences. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us that you can get the halawatul iman with three things. First, is to love or hate anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if you make a friend, it is for the sake of Allah. If you go to a place, it is for the sake of Allah. You, you, will, enjoy, you will experience the halawah of iman. The second thing he said is that 
Allah and His Messenger be beloved to you than anything else. When Allah and His Messenger be become beloved to you than anything else, then automatically you are connected to this source of, 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 of constant solace, of constant uh, uh, guidance, of constant, constant uh, bishara. So automatically you will, you will find the, the sweetness of faith. And the third thing is that you, you, you dislike going back to kufr, just like you dislike being thrown into the fire. In fact, some ulama says that the first thing is to do with relations. And the second thing is to do with the connection to the world and anything, anything in the world. So you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you love anything for the sake of Allah. You sacrifice any relation if it is not for the sake of Allah. And the second thing is that you sacrifice anything in, you love in this world if it, is, it interferes between, between the love of you and, and, the Prof, uh, and Allah and the Prophet sallallahu And the third thing is you dislike going back to that state because you have tasted the faith. You dislike being going, going back to the state just like you dislike being thrown into the fire. Another general advice which we can, we can, we can derive from our times is that we must have wusa fil ikhtilafat. We must have that... Uh, that uh, openness, open-mindedness in accepting. If somebody is praying like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, it's okay. They are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, isn't it? They are coming to the masjid. We have people who are not coming to the masjid. If people are, are celebrating their love by singing the mawlid, let them celebrate. People don't want to celebrate. They want to celebrate the love of the Prophet sallallahu in their way. Let them celebrate their love in their way. As long as they love the Prophet sallallahu that is the maqsad. Right now, if you're going to look into the petty, petty issues, we don't have time. We don't have time. The house is on fire. You're being thrown a bucket of water. You're saying, who are you giving me the bucket of water? You understand? It's not a time for you to discuss these things. We must clarify the truth. I'm not saying we have, we have blanket acceptance. We must clarify the truth. We must know our stance. We must know our hujjah. But where there is common good, we should not split the ummah unnecessarily. We should not split the ummah and say, we are suffering because of that. And, and, and we, can, we can build that by having a husnu dhan. Generally what has happened today is that the first thing we have is su dhan of a person. And, the, and you, our dua should be, Allahumma rzukna husnu dhan bik wa bi ibadik. We must have good opinion of people. We must have the, the thought that, that somebody who is next to you is probably better than you. And if he's doing something, maybe he has a hujjah for it. There was one alim, he had so much, he had, he, had, he had such a wide reading. If somebody came to him and said, look at this person, he's praying like this. He said, no, there's a dalil for this. Look at this person, he's doing this. He said, no, there's a dalil for this. So, because of his wide reading, he, re he realized that everybody has his, has his dalil. And, and everybody is accepted into the fold of Islam. Like once, uh, it is narrated that Imam Zuhri, one of the great scholars of Medina, from whom as Imam Malik even takes and as Imam Bukhari also takes, he was, uh, he was sitting in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu and a man came, he did two taslims. And according to the Maliki, one taslim is the recommended position. I don't want to create uh, confusion, but I'm just saying a story here. So when the man did the taslim, the second taslim, Imam Zuhri, this great scholar, approached him. He says, why did you do two? And uh, you understand that the people here, they do only one taslim. He said that, uh, I have a hadith for it. They said, uh, the Imam Zuhri said, how come I have not come across it? So the man asked Imam Zuhri, that, uh, do you know all the hadith? Imam Zuhri said, no. Do you know two-third? He said, no. Do you, do you know half? He said, probably. He said that, فَجَعَلُوا فِي نِسْفِ الَّذِي لَا تَعْرِفُوا Make this hadith which you don't know in the half that you, that, that you don't know. Put this hadith in that half you don't know. And Imam Zohri laughed. Because these people are people of tolerance. You understand? So probably there is some delil which you have not come across. So we can't be so narrow-minded in our, in our acceptance of our fellow believers. Another thing which we have to realize is that we must hit the pause button in our life. We must hit pause. Because when we get into the car, we switch on the WhatsApp or we are listening to something. We are listening to something. We get home, we are on WhatsApp. We are not getting time to think. We are not getting time to think. We must keep the distractions away. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu used to have antikaf. He keeps the distractions away. You think about life. Where you are coming from, where you are going, where you are. 
as a human being you have that capacity to realize the the purpose you have in this life but you must give it thought you must you must give a pause to the to the over, overwhelming nature of media and, and, and events around you for example the, there was a, my my cousin's young son he when he went he said he went to dubai and they were climbing burj khalifa i think yeah in the lift the lift takes you few seconds to go up in the lift they put a video so even in that moment the two three minutes you have in the lift they don't want you to think you are distracted by this video in that moment even they, at every moment there is an advertisement there is something there is always this distraction we have we have come to an age of distraction and even the scholars say the thing which moves a, a man from from that wheel of fortune from the center to the sides is the distraction is the ghafla so we must take heed we must people we become people of of yaqba that's why one of the duas of the salih is salihin is allahumma ayqidh qulubana lak wa nabihna min al ghaflati ank o allah make make us be present in your remembrance be present in in, our, in your awareness and protect us from heedlessness from your from your remembrance and furthermore we understand that at this point in time the family unit is un under attack and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said alayka bi khuwaisati nafsik yani for you at this time is to look at that circle of influence there are things which are happening in st in state house for example they are not under your, your influence you cannot decide the percentage of vat they are going to charge on vat but there are things which are within your control yourself you are within is within your control your uh, your uh, family is within your control your circle of friends are within your control so the family unit is under attack the family unit because the family unit is the one which integrates the whole society when the family breaks the society breaks and we just heard from sheikh barak awais uh, the the uh, the reason the divorces have increased the family unit is disintegrating so we must make sure that at home you hold your family together you hold it firmly because if the family is firm the children are safeguarded if the children are safeguarded as the fitna come they have a strong foundation so we must understand this and we must be aware of of this uh, of this on onslaught on the family another thing which we we complain today is that we do not have time and i complain to my friends most about it but my, our sheikh uh, sayyid habib umar hafizullah he said they take care of four times and you you'll see barakah in your time one time before fajr the time of suhoor one time between fajr and and ishraq at the time just before maghrib even if it's a few minutes and the other time is between maghrib and isha if you can hold take hold of these four times you'll have barakah in your time the suhoor we, we know is a time of acceptance of dua the time between fajr and ishraq you get a barakah in your rizq you get you get inshirah you get bust at that time the time just before maghrib imam haddad says it is a time for spiritual nourishment just like the time between fajr and ishraq is a time for worldly nourish worldly risk the spiritual risk is before maghrib and between maghrib and isha we just mentioned it earlier so we take care of this time and uh, also related to the other point which i said time of distraction we prophet sallallahu told, told us min husn al islam al mari tarkuhu ma la yani there's so many things you get you get a video it doesn't concern you don't download it don't download it who said you have to see every video it's not a wahi that you have to read every video you have to read every ayah in the quran not every video which are sent on the groups you, you understand it's a time of distraction we must keep away those distractions in husnil islam al mari tarku ma la yani there is news feed they want to feed you with news you cut it off the falamma khudi al amr qala ash shaytan ان ان الله ان الله وعدكم وعد الحق وعدتكم فاخلفتكم موعدي اني دعوتكم فاستجبتوا لي in the ayah it continues that shaitan says when when the time comes that allah promised you and he promised you the truth and i promised you and i've gone back on my promise i just invited you you accepted we are in control we are, we have the we have we have that conscious and subconscious decisions we are making we have to we have to define those decisions and because on that day shaitan will say ma ana bi musrikhikum wa ma antum bi musrikhi i'm i cannot help you nor can you help me shaitan will will take all the blame of himself today we say oh shaitan ibana shit lakini who is to be blamed on that day shaitan will not take the blame 
وكلكم آتي الرحمن فردا everybody shall face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah mahsin wukufana bayna yadayk ya Rabb so uh, and we, 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 we should connect to the people of the truth how do you know the people of the truth they are the people of sanad they are the people of silsila they are people who will create in you love of Allah and his messenger and compassion for the people they are people of ijma you don't go to a lecture and you come out thinking you are the best person in, uh, around or everybody else is on misguidance then you have attended the wrong type of lecture you have attended the wrong type of gathering even if, if that person claims to be a scholar the, the, pe the people of the truth they are people who have the compassion and mercy if there is somebody on misguidance pray for him don't wish his neck to be chopped off if every kuffar was killed then whom will we do da'wah to whom will we do da'wah to so they are people of compassion, the people of, of calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must understand that. And if we continue on, uh, on, this, on this line, like we said that we should focus on our nafs. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that our worst enemy, who is our worst enemy? Is the, is the, is the nafs which is uh, an anas in radiallahu anhu, qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aada aduwik nafs, nafsaka allati bayna jambayk. It is your nafs between your two sides. That's your worst enemy. Not America, not Israel. Your enemy is between here and shaitan. These are aduun mubin. These are clear, clear enemies for you. You're supposed to be focused on them. You're supposed to think what... You're not supposed to worry whether Trump is declaring Jerusalem as the next capital. You're supposed to worry whether your nafs will beat you for tomorrow's fajr prayer. So we should, we, should, we should take our focus from external to internal. And that is one of the, one of the signs of Qiyamah is Qalbul Haqqaiq. Things are inverted. People want to adorn the structure. But inside they are kharab. It's nothing. We have to become Ulul Albab. People of Lub. People of the core. You have massages which are ornamented. But we don't have souls which are ornamented. We, we must build souls which, have this, which show the beauty of the prophetic character. So we must understand that Things are inverted. We are so focused on the outside. What is happening outside? We are forgetting that we have to build from the inside. And that is one of the things of these distractions. And uh, uh, I'm coming back since I've seen the point was written here. But during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there was a time of Makkah, which was a time of helplessness. There's a sunnah of helplessness. You pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say there's helplessness in front of the environment. There's helplessness in front of the nafs which overcomes you. Say, Allah may ni'adhuka min sharri nafsi wa min sharri kulli da'abatin anta akhidun bi nasiyatiha. Or, bi rahmatika ya rabbi astaghith wa min adhabik astajir. Aslih li shani kulli wa la takilni ila nafsi wa la ila ahadi min khalki katar fata'in. These are the duas the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us for guidance. We must pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say, Rabbi inni dha'ifun, faqawwi fi ridaka dha'fa quwwati, wa khudh bi yadika ila al-khayri nasiyati, wa ja'al al-islam muntaha ridai. Rabbi inni dha'ifun, faqawwini, wa dhalilun fa'izzini, wa faqirun faqnini. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us this dua. You pray to Allah, Ya Rabbi, nahnu al-fuqara wa anta al-ghani. You pray to Allah, Ya Allah, look at our state. We are being taken left, right and center. Ya Rabbi, help us. You pray to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, tadarruan wa khufya. You must understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is qareeb. He never says, he says that he's al-rafi'u al-mudil, al-qabidu al-basit. He says, he says he's al-muntaqim. He says, but he never says al-ba'id. He says qareeb, but he never says ma'ana bi-ba'id. He's never far. So pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He never attributed the attribute of distance to him. He's always near. So pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he shall answer, inshallah. And as we continue on uh, our talk, I think we, we will now move on. Uh, we mentioned that we must focus on, on ourselves and now we shall move on to, to aspiring for something which is higher. To aspiring to get to that level which the previous people got. Hazrat Ibn Hazrat Omar bin Abdul Aziz, radiallahu anhu, he used to pray this dua, and his dua was was Allahumma bi rahmatika ladi wasi'ta kulla shay, irhamni wa na shay. He said that with your mercy, which encompasses everything, have mercy on me, and I am something. 
uh, and the full narration uh, goes like this Allahumma in lam akun ahlan an abluha rahmatak fa inna rahmatak ahlan an tabluhani rahmatak wasi'ta kulla shay wa ana shay faltas'an fal faltas'ini rahmatak ya arhamar rahimin that let your mercy encompass me Allahumma innaka khalaqta khawman fa ata'uk fi ma amartahum wa amilu fi alladhi khalaftahum خلقتهم له فرحمتك اياهم كانت قبل طاعتهم لك يا ارحم الراحمين he said ya rabbi you created a people who, who worshiped you but it was your mercy which preceded for them to worship you so you pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are our, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are your creation and there are people who went before us and they were they found the guidance and it was your mercy which guided them ya rabbi so also grant us that mercy which will guide us we must we must aspire to be awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the famous hadith of quds or hadith al qudsi an abi hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam inna allah ta'ala qala man aada li waliyan faqad aadantahu bil harb wa ma taqarrabu ilayya 'abdun bi shay'in ahabbu ilayya mimma iftaratuhu alayhi wa la yazalu 'abdi yatakarrabu ilayya bin nawafil hatta uhibba fa idha ahbabtahu fa kuntu sam'u alladhi yasma'u bi wa basaru alladhi yubsiru bi ويده الذي يبتش به ورجله التي يمشي بها ولئن سالني لا اعطيت لا اعطينه ولئن استعذني لا اعذنه if he shall if he shall ask me i shall surely give him don't we want to be like that right now we want to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will surely give us if we become awliya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we must aspire to be this not because we are worthy of this but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is worthy of getting to us because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy mercy can encompass everything so we must aspire to be these great people because you say allahumma la tahrim khairan ma indaka bi sharrin ma indana fadlan wa ihsanan wa judan wa imtinanan bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin there is a narration which comes that hazrat shibli rahmatullahi alayhi one of the great saints of the past persian saint he was he was under a tyr- tyrannical ruler and he was thrown to the lions he was thrown to the lions as a punishment and in that moment the when he was thrown the lions the lion attacked him and he had the mouth of hazrat shibli in his head so the head of hazrat shibli was in the mouth of the lion later on and 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 the karama was that he was saved from that moment later on and people asked hazrat shibli that ya sheikh what were you thinking when your head was in the mouth he said that i was thinking is the saliva what is the ruling fiqh ruling of the saliva of a lion is it najis so look at look at the state of these people they are not worried about the situation they are worried about their state their ibadah their tahara with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in that moment when his head is in in the lion's mouth when he is terrified to the core he is not worried about that because he knows that god will take care of that he is only worried about what he is supposed to do if he is going to be saved from this will he be able to pray probably so we must aspire to be such people and our time is a time that we have to run to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are fafiru ila allah and we are running we are running to the dunya it's 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 uh, it's inverted the reality is inverted and we must also become the people of tawakkul we must have have faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that history is in good hands if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you on earth he shall not leave, leave you bereft of guidance we must have the husn dhan of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you must have rida bil qadr and you must have husn dhan you must ingrain that in your heart that whatever happens kull lan yusibana illa ma kataba allah lana it's lana lana it's for us it is not against us and this dunya is part 1 akhira is part 2 if you see both the paths maybe you will agree so if you can't see it trust allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the trust in your creator if is you you must build that love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by by looking at the blessings he has given us and you must have the trust and have a good opinion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at the end of times because of the yani in kiswahili we say to kitingi shika you will feel like as if that we are losing ground like what's happening but if you have trust that 
Everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. بيده الأمر كله. إليه يرجع الأمر كله. يدبر الأمر. We have to have لجوء إلى الله subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must understand that one of the solutions, and this is the biggest solution, that we must connect at any point in time. When a difficulty confronts you, first step is to turn to God. First step is to turn to God. So, and we, we, we look at, we look at uh, for example, the, the ayah in the, in the Quran which says that نَبِّي عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ He didn't say وَأَنِّي شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says that tell my people that I am forgiving and uh, overlooking and merciful but he did not say that and tell them that I'm, I will punish them He said tell them that my, my punishment is severe He did not uh, uh, attach severity to himself but with the punishment this is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a merciful Lord it's not there. The lamb is missing. So we must understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not there to chop us kibao, to punish us for everything we do. We must understand that we have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mulana Rumi, even his even he, his times was a time of tribulation when the Mughals destroyed everything, destroyed everything. There was nothing living. And his father had a premonition and he went to, to present day Tur Turkey in Konya. And what does Molana Rumi say? He says, come, come, come again. Even if you have broken your vow a thousand times, come again. The, the, the bab of Tawbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always open. We must always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تيأسوا من روح الله لا تقنطوا من روح الله كل عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحم من رحمة الله. You always have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never think that your sin is bigger than the mercy of God. اللهم مغفرتك أوسع من ذنوبي ورحمتك أرجع عندي من عملي. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is greater than your sin. Your thought that your sin is greater than the mercy of God is also your nafs acting against you. That is also one of the tricks of the nafs. So we must, we must have this, this connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at, look at Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Osman radiallahu anhu. Once, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was, it was a time of Tabuk. There was a caravan which he had given in the way of, of Fi Sabilillah for the people uh, during the jihad. And people came uh, to him because it was a time when that caravan was in demand. And people came to him and the caravan had not yet reached Medina. People came to him, they tell him, we'll give you twice the value of the caravan. He said, no, I don't want it. They said, three times. They said, four times. He said, no, I don't want it. Said, he said, that, was it Omar Subhanahu wa ta'ala who said that, I've been given even more than that. And he said, who is that? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me ten times. So these people are doing tijara with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hub of dunya had, had come out of their heart. Because one of the diseases of, uh, of our time is hubbukumu dunya that our love of, of the dunya will have overcome us. It will, be, it, will be, it will be filling our hearts. And we must understand that Imam Ghazali explains the dunya. He says that the height of the dunya can be explained in four things. Height of the dunya, it can be explained in four things. He said, honey, honey, asali, what is it? It's the vomit of the bee. It's vomit of the bee. If you come to silk, which is the be most beautiful, most, the softest material on earth, what is it? It's the excre exc excretion of a worm. It's the excretion of a worm. So there's vomit, there's excretion. The third thing, musk, the most beautiful smell. We are talking of sensory pleasures. What is it? It's the mucus of the gazelle. It's, it's the mucus of the gazelle. Hamas. So the dunya is vomit, is excretion, Hamas. And the, and the best, the highest form of sensual pleasure is a meeting between a man and a wife. It is a meeting of two parts, excretory organs, which only filth comes out from them. This is the height of the dunya. So does the dunya really have some value in your sight then? So we must understand that Prophet Sallallahu did not say that I fear that you'll be mushrikeen. Mashirka akafu alaykum. He said that yani, dunya yaglubu alaykum. That the world will overcome you. So we must understand that the disease will be of the heart. Hubbukum dunya karahiyatukum maut. Because we have not understood the world and its ephemeral nature, its fleeting nature. 
if by the dhikr of Allah, by this gathering we have spent in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have encapsulated it for in permanence, in, in, in the akhirah, we will find this gathering saved for us. But every time we, save, we, 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 we use in the dunya, we shall see it will perish. ma'indakum tanfidu wa ma'indallahi baq. This is what is the baqa. It is, it is going to remain if you're going to connect it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must understand that the world is, is always a trying place and it, is, it, is, it is always has that, that illusory feeling. But the akhirah is the hayawan, is the real life. And we must understand that any difficulty you face, you ask yourself, is this worth fighting for or not? Is it worth getting to the hole of the Prophet ﷺ? Is it worth getting the drink from the hand of the Prophet ﷺ? From the kawthar? That you say that, do I want to do this or no? I want to reach the hole of the Prophet ﷺ. Say, do I want to do this or I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He says that, Ya Abdi, I'm happy with you. And I, I have, you have got my rida. Isn't that a greater thing? So when we are faced with a temptation, we must put in front of our eyes the, the, the reward in the akhirah which has been kept, which is greater and which is of permanent nature. Because when you sin, the, the pleasure is little and the, the regret is long. And when you do a good thing, for example, for you to come here, and I hope it's going to be a beneficial gathering. In the beginning, your nafs will say, ah, what's an ikai? You know, let me just stay back home. But then if you bring yourself, you overcome that pain. It was little. But then inshallah, because you stayed with a good intention of, of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you shall find the pleasure, you shall find the benefit in this world and the hereafter. So we must understand that we, we focus on this. Like Imam Haddad says, لا يحرس عليها سوى أعمى بصيرة That only the blind one runs for after the dunya. It is little. It is little. It is fleeting. It, it, it is diminishing. So we must understand that the nature of this world should not delude us. And uh, this is a similitude we can give that we have to build, we have to become trees who are strong in foundation. Right now we just had a typhoon hit, hit uh, Hong Kong. But if the, those trees which had very deep roots still survive, even if it was a if grade 10 typhoon. Because athluha sabitun. So we must get the light, the divine light, and process it. The divine light of guidance and process it. And we must nourish our roots from the prophetic spring of wisdom. And we shall be able to grow our trees. We shall be able to survive these trying times. We shall be able to teach our children, children to be able to face the difficult times. And we must understand that... That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not test you beyond what you can bear. And uh, a last point in about, about Akhirah is that the Prophet said, Akhiru min dhikri hadimil laddat. Remember much death. Now somebody will say, You're just depressive. Just depressive. Man, every time, moti, moti, moti. We are not going to enjoy life. But the Prophet was the, was, the, was, the, was the human being who lived his life to the fullest. Because when you know that death is is imminent, you're going to make the most of this moment because this moment will not return. So you put your whole, your whole faculties to that moment. The Prophet ﷺ was Ibn al-Waqt. He put his whole in that moment. So when you realize that the, 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 the nature of the dunya is fleeting, it's not that you become depressed, but you become, you become more focused on that moment. You don't become distracted. So that is one of the things which we can, we can implement in our lives, inshallah. And just uh, on the side note, the Prophet ﷺ also said that Ummati kal matar, you know, my Ummah is like rain. We don't know the first of it or the last of it. These are statements of hope. We, we, all, we all know that the, uh, the Khairul Quruni Karni. But also there's another hadith which says Ummati kal matar, my Ummah is like rain. Because there is good in every time. There are good people in every time and age. And also the Prophet ﷺ said, Ummati Ummatun Marhuma, that my Ummah is a. Is a, is a, is a Ummah which has been had mercy on because the adab is on, on the dunya. There is no adab in the akhirah. Adabu hafid dunya. So with these things in mind, I think inshallah we shall now come uh, to the end of our, uh, our talk. Uh, I hope I have not ex exceeded too much. But inshallah we shall now conclude uh, with a few points which shall give us hope in, uh, in, in, in striving 
in striving for, for that which is, which, is, which is to come, inshallah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alayhi wa sallam. The fitna can also be compared to the winds. The winds. In Kswahili, we have a, we have a saying, Bendera ufata upepo. That, that, uh, that the, uh, a flag just follows the direction of the wind. If you become stationary, then whatever the fitna takes you, you will follow it. But if you are, if you are moving towards God, if you are in that ship, in that mashua, which, in which you are sailing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and under you is the sea of the fitna, is the sea of... Of, of temptation and then when the wind comes you direct your sail to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the shore of safety to the shore of hope to the shore of of itminan so we must understand that we can take that wind and and make it for us and not against us so so that, that is an example which which uh, which we can give another example which we can have is that for example when we see a boat which has a machine and it's, it's piercing through the, the sea. You'll see the ripples which hit till the, uh, till the, uh, till the shores. These are the ripples which are formed. So it's just a boat in a big sea, but still it creates ripples. Like that, uh, the human being is at the center of the universe. And we are looking at the metaphysical nature of a human being. When a human being does an action, there are waves which are emitted. If you do good, there are positive waves which are emitted, which will bring rain, which will bring baraka. But if you do wrong, there are negative waves which are emitted, which will take away the baraka. So we must understand that as a human being, we are at the center of the universe and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the universe at our disposal. We are the khalifa. If we act right, then everything else is rectified. And uh, lastly, before I, I conclude my talk, I will mention that, uh, that we must not forget the importance of... Uh, of Surah Al-Kahf. And we must also remember, for example, the okay. study time is over, and inshallah, even I'm over. <laughs> inshallah, is up here. So, uh, if you're in a dark room, for example, you're in a dark room right now, you have a small phone, let's say even a kabambe, the small phone. You don't switch on the light, you don't switch on the torch light. Even that light, on the front screen, on the keypad. If you're in a dark room, that little light gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, clarity. So when the time gets intense, even if the darkness is veil over veil, despite the intensity of the darkness, uh, the little light, the little candle light, it creates enough, dark, enough light for you to see. Taraktukum ala mahajjatin bayda layluha kanahariya. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I've left you on a clear path. It's night, it's like it's day. Because even in the intensity of the fitna, you will be able to find your way. So we must hold on to whatever light we can, we can hold, to, hold on to. And inshallah, it shall be sufficient for us. And uh, lastly, we must not forget the importance of the recitation of the Surah Al-Kaf. And the example of the of the fitya in Nam fitya to Namanu Birabihim, we have a good example. Rabbana Atina Milla Dunka Rahmatan Wahi Lana Min Amrina Rashada. There's a dua and the and the cave which you were supposed to run to is the cave of the Prophet, the cave of safety. And uh, we must also remember Ayuha Azka to Aman. When they send for the food, they ask for the Azka to Aman, they ask for the best food. So the fitya had a connection with halal and toyiba. Not only halal but good food. So we have, we have to keep these things in, in mind. Amanu amilu salihat. Because when the fitna comes, your iman erodes. You must give it life with amal and saliha. And we must continue to do good action. Because the amal and saliha, it builds your iman. And as the, as the fitna comes, it, uh, it does not erode it totally. Uh, so a few things just to wrap up my talk. Which we can, we can hold on to in terms of point form. And uh, I know I've not done justice to the topic. And there's much which can be said and they are better who can speak but inshallah we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he, he grants us benefit from, uh, from what was said and makes us be able may allow us, allows us to implement it in our lives in our families and, uh, uh, and in, the, in, the, in, our, in our sphere of concern so the few things which we can hold on to is number one turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua and sincerity number two recitation of surah al-kahf out of belief, we might not know. Somebody say, how can Surah Al-Kaf save me from the Dajjal? The Prophet Sallallahu said it. Iman is Iman. You have to believe it. There are reasons the, the ulama have said, but you have to have belief in that. 
So continue to recite it. Number three is focusing on yourself, your heart, your family, and your circle of concern. Number four, not getting involved in the fitna, stopping, uh, not involving in hand, in speech, or even in heart, just holding back, just holding back, just staying put, and not, not getting involved in any, any of these tribulations. Number four is to connect, and this is very important, to connect to scholars of truth and the people of truth. Because, we have to be with the truthful ones. And the truthful ones, they are the people of, uh, of, of Huda. They are the people who will give us the guidance at this time. And inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, He grants us His love. Allahumma inna nasaluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba kulla amalin yukarubina ila, ila hubbik. Ya adhal jalal ikram. Allahumma subhanaka rabbana alimna ma yanfauna wa anfana ma alamtana. Allahumma alimna min al-ilmi ladhi turdika biha anna. ولا تأخذنا بما تعلم به منا اللهم يا حليم خلقنا بخلق الحلم وحققنا بحقائق العلم اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وحمدك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله أنت أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك